Hey friends, this is Dr. Diane of the Shenandoah Valley Discovery Museum. Thank you for joining me today for Exhibit with an Educator. I'm so glad you could make it. We are going to begin our journey here at the Longhouse. And as we go in, we are going to learn a little bit more about the people who lived in this region of Virginia and about the Longhouse itself. Are you ready to join me? Let's go inside. At the Shenandoah Valley Discovery Museum, we hope that when you come into the Longhouse, you experience a sense of playfulness and curiosity. Inside the Longhouse, you have a chance to imagine and try to think about what life might have been like for the Eastern Woodland people 300 years ago. While you're in here, you might explore the different animals of Virginia. You might have a chance to use your imagination and go fishing, or maybe you'll sort the corn and the beans and the squash. Maybe you'll sit around our fire and you'll tell stories. There are all kinds of things you can do as you play. You also have an opportunity to learn not only about the Eastern Woodland peoples, but also about the Pueblo and the Plains people. And today, as a special treat, I want to introduce Andrew, who is of Pamunkey and Cherokee descent, and I'm going to allow Andrew to tell us the story of this longhouse. Let's look at where we're sitting right now. This is called a longhouse. This is a model of a longhouse. In my language, the word is yaheke. Uh, but it's essentially a longhouse. Now, if you look around, you'll see that it's made of natural materials. And we make it from whatever is available to where we are. So if we were next to the coastline, you maybe have some more like river reeds and stuff like that, you would see that. Further inland, when you didn't, wouldn't have that, then you have like bark from trees and so forth. So whatever is in the environment, that would have that. The reason why it's called a longhouse is because it's long. Okay. And this is a small model, but it's a very accurate representation of what a longhouse is. Typically, a longhouse would be about 10 feet wide, maybe wider, 10 to 12 feet tall, and maybe about 30, 40 feet long. And the reason why we did that is because multiple generations lived in the same shelter. So where you might have to go see your grandparents, you might have to take a trip for six hours by plane or whatever to go see your grandparents, we just walked down the end of the hall. <laughs> Had all our generations together in one in one place and that's how we had our communities there's another reason why we had a long house people when they think of us and think of how we used to live the first thing that comes to mind teepees there are no teepees here <laughs> and there's a good reason for that you'll find a teepees out in the plains teepee um, was used uh, by the Plains people because the Plains people were heavily dependent on the buffalo. We call the buffalo Walmart. Anything you needed, you got from the buffalo. So your food, your clothing, your materials for your shelter, your medicine, your tools, these all came from the buffalo. Well, buffalo migrate. You have to migrate with the buffalo. If you didn't, then you wouldn't have access to the, to the buffalo. So they needed something that they could, you know, fold up camp, follow the buffalo, find out where the buffalo, set up camp, and it evolved into the TP. We call the TP America's first mobile home because essentially that's what it was. Um, but here on the East Coast, we didn't have to worry about following any migration pattern. But we were farmers. I talked earlier about the corn, beans, and squash. We didn't have hunting season, so if we wanted to go get a deer, we went and got a deer. If we wanted to go get a fish, we would go get a fish. <laughs> then we would have our farm, we would have our berries and nuts that we collected. So we didn't need a mobile home. We needed a permanent structure. And I, um, do we still live like that today? No. We live in houses and apartments and just like everybody else does. Uh, but that's how it was 
um, before contact and even for a while during contact. Um, the longhouse was very suitable for us. It was very, very warm in the wintertime because when you have all those people packed in there, you got a lot of body heat. There was a fire in the center, um, but it was generally not used for cooking. You might have some pots there that kept things warm, but generally you have a central cook fire in, in, in the village. Um, but it was used to help you know, radiate heat, give light, and put off smoke. The smoke helps keep the bugs away, especially in the summertime, keep the mosquitoes out. Up top we had a, a, a little flap, if you got too smoky we can open up the doors, open up the flap, get some of the smoke out. Uh, and then we had, you know, the, the one end of the, the Yehaken, a longhouse. That's where the, the head of that longhouse would be, whether it be the chief of the village, it could be a head grandmother or head grandfather, whoever was important. That was the seat of honor. And so whenever guests came, like a chief of another tribe, or let's say the Europeans came to visit, came to trade, we would always put them in a position of honor. Uh, and then everybody else would be around us. We had these shelves that you see up here that we would store our, our things, just like closets would be used, or, or pantries. We would put our stuff there. Um, and uh, that's how it was for us. Thank you for joining us today for Exhibit with an Educator. We hope to see you at the Shenandoah Valley Discovery Museum soon.